You're listening to Oh My Health, There Is Hope podcast. When your heart is aching and your world is shaking, don't give up. No, no, don't give up. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope, the podcast. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I'm here with one of my favorite people, Donna Fatigato. Donna is a best-selling author, holistic nutrition and cooking coach, certified personal trainer, and certified yoga and Pilates and wellness specialist. And I'm super excited to have her here. She's also one of our writers in Best Holistic Life's magazine. And like, I've been dying to get her on the show so that she can share some of her beautiful stories with you. So welcome to the show, Donna. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Jenna. Well, one of the first things we ask all of our guests to do is to share their story of hope, because I believe those beautiful journeys that we were given inspire the world when we share them. So do you want to share your story of hope with us today? Absolutely. So um, I've always wanted to write a book. And my goal was when I was 50, I was going to be finished. But, you know, life gets in your way. And, you know, you, I, you know, three adult children, they were getting married and they were having kids and something always was happening. And I kind of was on the same path as I would tell my clients. And I would be like, I know you don't have the time, but you have to make the time for yourself. So it was kind of like I was telling myself that on my own message. Well, then my body broke down and it actually told me my message. So what had happened was I had went to Salt Lake City um, for, for, for a a meeting and for a little bit of pleasure. And I climbed a mountain, I felt great, came home. I was golfing with my husband on the golf course. We carry our bags, we're at like the fourth hole. And I'm like, I don't know, something's not right. My legs really hurt. And he goes, oh, that mountain. I said, no, it was about a week ago. I'm like, they weren't sore, it's not that. And so we finished and we, he's like, maybe we need to get something to eat. So I went to go get something he couldn't even eat, went home, was in bed for about an hour, woke up, I had 105 fever. So I went to the emergency room and he had told, and so the doctors had said to my husband, go to the chapel and pray. Your wife is in sepsis mode. And I'm going to search God. So, and it was very shocking for me because I've been in the industry, the wellness industry since 1981 and I'm very healthy. And I was like, well, how can this be? What's happening? And so I guess I had a kidney stone that, that, released from my kidney and it was lodged somewhere and it became very toxic. And I didn't even know I had a kidney stone. So what had happened was I was in the hospital for about a week and a half. I had stents put in and I couldn't teach fitness classes. Um, So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna make this a positive and I'm gonna finish my book. And so I did. (laughs) So it took me, I had all the recipes because my book that I um, that I wanted to write, and actually, um, I had not even a chapter written, but I had all the recipes. I had 120 healthy recipes because I was teaching cooking classes for for years, and I just had to create all the nutritional analysis for it. So I, from October all the way to January, I finished my book. It's 300 pages. It's a message of hope, healing, transformation, plus 120 healthy recipes. So it's, it's right here. Yep. Q2. I, oh, love it. I love the title Q2 quality, quality. <laughs> yeah. It's quality and quantity. Yep. Absolutely. For sure. Um, I love your story, by the way. And as we talked before, and I totally relate to that because I had been septic when I had a surgery that went completely haywire and it's, it's hard. I was eight weeks in the hospital, like struggling to survive. So it's scary, but it does alter the mm-hmm. way you see your life. Like for me, I realized when I thought I was dying that those beautiful Louis Vuitton shoes I had and the fancy car and the Hermes bag weren't something I even cared about. All I cared about was making that beautiful memory with my grandkids. And how do I get more time to do that? So I think it really does set things into motion. And the way you teach your clients about making time for themselves, if you don't, your body will. And like that's crazy time. You don't want to spend that kind of time with yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we both survived it and, you know, we both turned it into positives and, um, but we don't want people to go that far. We don't want them to have to endure something like that. 
So if you could just get the word out about, you know, living as healthy as, even though you and I both do, but also dealing with situations, you know, it, you know, some people would not be able to, um, it might crumble them a little bit more. It might, you know, distract them from finishing their goals. You just never know what's going on with people in their minds. I agree. And you know, that old saying the road to hell is paved on path of good intentions. Yeah. We have the best intentions to take care of ourselves, And you said it so well, life gets in the way. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to do this on Tuesday and then Tuesday happens. And one of the kids is sick or they forgot a school book or your husband needed something. And the next thing you know, Tuesday is gone. Yeah. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and life gets in the way. And the next thing, you know, not only is Tuesday gone, 2020 is gone. Right. And you're like, how do you get on track when you have a busy life to put your health as a priority? Right. Right. I know it's, um, it's a challenge. You have to go back to your why, what is your why? If you don't revisit your why, then you're just gonna keep going in circles and not really finishing what you truly want to do. So talking about like making personal whys for yourself, like I hear it all the time. You want to build a business. Why? What's your why you're creating a dream? What's your why? I even had a lady teaching on when you have children, what's your why? Like have a mission statement for what kind of children you want to raise and what kind, like, do you want to be the at home at dinner at five where everyone's around the table, or maybe we're just doing Sunday dinners, or maybe we're a busy family and everyone's, but what is your why? How do you think you could start creating a why on your personal health journey? For me, it was almost dying. That was my why. I don't want to be, I know that we're not all supposed to be here forever, but mm -hmm. I also knew I still had a purpose to be here and I had a message and I had a job. And so that why for me became massive. And I think about it every single day when I get tired or when I think I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Why? So how do you think people can make a why without getting in their deathbed <laughs> and having that kind of realization? Well, just starting with the basics, the people around you, you want to, you want to be there for them and you want to be able to help them out. That's what I, that's what I always envision it as. And also what kind of quality of life do you want to live? So, you know, that should, that should be forefront. You know, so not only what your why is, and what, yeah, what is your purpose? You know, we were all born into this world and you, you have to find within yourself what your purpose is. But I think that just being around and healthy for your family is a great starting point. And then there might, there might be a more brighter why, you know, that will bring you into a career or, or you know, volunteer or do something spectacular. And I know for, because we have a lot of moms that listen to the show and I know they're thinking, yeah, that sounds nice in reality. That's probably mm -hmm. not going to happen. And I've been there. I have four kids and three of them are literally every nine and a half months I was having a baby. So they're like, they share the same birthday, like the same mm -hmm. birth year in their year. So it's hard. And I can remember them getting the flu and then me catching the flu. And I couldn't lay down because I had to take care of my kids. And I remember laying in bed crying, thinking, why can't I just be sick once by myself? <laughs> <laughs> but that's like not the right kind of um, train of thought for my brain. Like, I don't, I don't want to be sick. How do I keep my family to staying healthy? Right. And nobody getting sick, but I do understand that you struggle as young moms or, or however you are in a busy life. It's hard, but putting yourself first will add not only years, it's going to be your Q2 quantity and quality <laughs> to your life. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I want to know a little bit about the beautiful books you're writing. Like you have a series of children's books and they're beautiful. And I want you to show, share why you were inspired to write them, who they're for. Well, um, I, through my career, I've been in the wellness industry for four decades and I've worked with hundreds of clients and thousands of group fitness um, participants. And so I thought one day, I thought, you know what? I'm going to write a children's book because it really should start from the beginning. <laughs> really have to get the younger generation because if we get the younger generation, then, you know, we'll, they'll, everybody will be just so much better. You know, it's not having to learn about a healthy lifestyle. You're learning about it from the, from the beginning. And I realized it does come from the parents. So I did include a parent's corner in each of the books, but I 
did, I, I manifested these characters because I wrote Bucky and Daisy. I drew Bucky and Daisy on all of my folders when I was like in junior high. And I named it Bucky and Daisy. I'm not an artist by any means, but I did create these characters. And then I, after I wrote my Q2 book an hour, an hour later, I was going to say a year later, <laughs> I came up with my first book, Bucky and Daisy, Moody Adventures Discover Eating Healthy. And um, I was, after I was done, I was like, oh my goodness, Bucky and Daisy. I, I really believe that I knew back then I was going to write about that. And at that time, I was active, um, but I also struggled. Here's another story of hope because <laughs> I struggled with Renaud's disease and I was a gymnast and I had to quit because I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't have any feeling in my fingers. They would turn completely white and it would be very painful and numb. So I suffer with that also, but anyway, I won't cry anymore, but, <laughs> but I overcame that. Um, and yeah, and things are great. But anyway, so then a year after that, I decided I'm going to write some more books and more children's books. So I wrote three more stories with the Bucky and Daisy to complete four for the collection so far. Um, I am working on two more already. And uh, like we said, life gets in the way. You know, my mom had passed and I thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm just going to put these on hold. But I thought I'm going to make a goal in September of this year. I'm going to release all four books. I revamped the first book so it was cohesive with the other three books because I had found an, an, another, a different illustrator, which the first illustrator was awesome, but it was actually um, a friend of mine's daughter and she's very young and she was, she went to a Bradley university and she just wanted to do it as a project. But I really wanted these books to go far and reach many hands. And um, we decided it was best that I go with a different illustrator and they all have such awesome messages. So it's Bucky and Daisy Mood Adventure, discover eating healthy, discover exercise, discover relaxation and discover health and wellness. So what age group would you say these books are mostly targeting? Well, it puts it in a category of ages two to eight, but I already did story times and a 10 month old little baby was her eyes just lit up every page and she, her eyebrows went up and she was just so involved. And even my own granddaughter started, you know, reading to her when she was six months old and very responsive. I think the earlier, the better. And I think also that beyond eight, they're awesome messages. So I think even older than eight could really relate to them or at least find, uh, find that important message and about themselves. You know, I'm a huge, huge reader. I've loved reader. It was my way of escaping in my brain to just relax and absorb. Right. But I've read to my kids since before they were born. Like I literally would read out loud to them every single night. And then when they were born, I would go in and sit with them as they were going to sleep. And I'd read to them. I played music and put it on my belly. Right. But I wanted to have all those beautiful experiences and all four of my kids are avid readers. Like I would be, why aren't the dishes done? And they would have the oven door down with a book on the rack and they push it in and flip it up. We're getting it done because they didn't want me to see that they were reading instead of doing their dishes, but they all absolutely love reading. So you can give your kids not only the gift of education, of enriching their brain, of changing, like maybe some negative habits that they could create later because they have a better understanding at any age, including before they're born, you can read them these beautiful stories and start like developing who they're going to become. Like we're creating human beings. What kind of human beings do we want to create? So I love that you've written all these books. What are the next two going to be on? The next two are on um, just sharing and caring. <laughs> I sharing love that. Is caring. Sharing is caring, but yes, two, two separate messages. It, I love that you're doing that. By the way, did you know that um, Bucky and Daisy, the, the drawing that you did reminds me of a tummy, reminds me of a gut? Did you oh, mean definitely. to do that? No, I, I have no idea. All I know is that there was, at that time, there were these hearts. There were just hearts with arms and legs, and they were similar to that, but I thought, I'm going to make my own. Because everybody, everybody would go to junior high and they'd have these little stuffed hearts. And I thought they were so cute, but I just thought I'm going to draw my own. So I just made them a little different. 
they look a little bit like guts to me and happy guts, right? Like our yeah. guts are our brain. It's like a huge right. brain for us. Yeah. So I love, I love that they look like that to me anyways. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about, first of all, we're going to put links to all of Donna's information. So you can go grab these books. And I know that she's bundled them into a series of four. So if you buy the entire group of four, she gives you a massive discount, which is incredible. And that way you're not you know, pulling them in one at a time. I want them to be your kids' favorite books, right? I like not just ours, but we want them to be our kids' favorite books. So they're asking for that read every night and they're learning a beautiful lesson while they're doing that. So I hope that this becomes a massive series for you. And I even hope that at some point it goes beyond the age of eight. Like now that I'm a preteen, like what does that look like? All my friends are eating, you know, French fries and McDonald's. But what does that look like for me? Can I create a change all of my own and start getting people excited about eating the right things? So I, I just think there's a lot of places for you to go with these beautiful books. I'm so excited for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm excited. Um, I definitely want to talk about, I want people to know how to find you. So um, I know that you're on Instagram at, I just want to make sure that I have it right. Oh, yeah. Donna underscore Fatiago. But <laughs> I, I, I know I can say it right. Fatigato. <laughs> so yes. And, um, that's Italian, right? Yes. So definitely you want to go there and she has her Q2 fit, um, dot com that you can click on there. That'll take you to all kinds of amazingness and you can get her cookbook. Tell us a little bit of what kind of coaching you do. Um, I do lifestyle coaching, nutritional counseling, um, just, you know, basically a personal training online coaching. So uh, just a, a array of everything. I mean, I've been in the industry, like I said, for 40 years and um, it's been, it's been great to help people, you know, live healthier. Yeah. I agree. I, by the way, people are always like, they only think they need a nutritionist if something massive is happening, but here's the thing. If you're on any kind of medications, you're pre-diabetic, you have high blood pressure, you um, are struggling with maybe depression or, or hormonal imbalance before your doctor puts you on drugs, ask him, like work with your doctor and say, look, if I spoke to a nutritionist, if I got help from a nutritionist and we tried a, a new way of eating for me, a new lifestyle for me, could I retest those labs in six months and see if that's working? That's what I did. And it got me off of every medication with my doctor. I didn't just stop taking and say, I'm going to try this. I got tested regularly as my levels got better. He'd start winging me off until I was off of everything. Diet can change literally everything in your life. It's what fuels us. It's what moves us forward. So finding a nutritional coach like Donna is empowering to your lifestyle. And what happens is there's this trickle, trickle effect that goes out, right? When I started learning things about what was healthy for me and started putting those on our table, buying those when we went to the grocery store, instead of the other things, I noticed a health change in my entire family, including my husband, who's diabetic, having to get off of, you know, metformin and getting things under control because he was type two. And so he was able to change. So the trickle effect that you create when you educate yourself, or you work with someone like Donna is unbelievable. It might affect people. You don't even realize like a friend, a neighbor, uh, a niece, a nephew, your parents, like it is amazing. The change in people from one little change in yourself. So what kind of, um, when you're working with people and they're working on, um, like maybe nutritional issues, are you mostly women? Is it mostly hormonal? Is it weight loss? Um, I hate to use the word diet and weight loss because that's not what diet means. We were just talking about myths and, and facts. All the word diet means is what you put in your mouth, right? What you're feeding yourself. And people have changed that to be like these fad diets because the marketing for that is billions of dollars and it worked for them. And because we wanted to be that skinny girl on the picture or, you know, that 20 year old model and we're in our fifties and so, or for me in my sixties, it's not real. And so what are some of like the myths that you have to address when people come to you about their lifestyle and things that they heard that are not really accurate? Well, exactly what you said, diet should be a natural eating pattern, a healthy, a healthy daily, healthy daily nutrition and diet has the word die in it. So it's usually something that you can't sustain. So it's temporary. So you want to change to a healthy lifestyle. So just 
it's all it's all about the mind. It really is. It's a, it's thinking about it differently, um, and going you know just going delving right into like um, like for instance like okay if you want weight loss realistically say say if somebody comes to me and says I want to lose forty pounds and I say okay wait wait okay that's good you want to lose forty pounds but let's get you down ten pounds let's get you in that that category first. And they look at me kind of disappointed. I'm like, no, you'll be better off. You want to take baby steps because you, if you shoot for that 40 pounds and you're like sitting here waiting and waiting and going, oh, I don't see it. I don't see it. And now you're stressing yourself out because you have in your mind, I want to lose 40 pounds. It's, it's just not healthy. That mindset is not healthy. So it's really about connecting the mind with what your nutritional goal is. Not only teaching them about of course, the food labels and, you know, even, even teaching the food labels, that's why I came up with Q2. I would start talking about food labels and people would be glared over and they still didn't get it, you know, in the serving size. They're like, okay. I'm like, well, if you go, so I would explain more Q2 quality and quantity first, the quality of the food. And then we talk about the quantity of the food and do it more realistically, like the deck of cards and stuff like that, because they're like, why well, don't know, do you have to measure my food out? And they just get so glared over and so confused. And then it becomes frustrating for them. And then they decide that they're, you know, just going to go back into their old ways. So it's important to just teach them, teach them the best that you can, you know, um, how I teach somebody uh, about nutritional counseling and how so another counselor may, it might be two different ways, but I just found my way to do it. And it's been successful for, for me and for other people. So for the people that wanted to reach your goals. I think so. that is a great tip. And I feel like the, of course, quality is the number one part of it, but then quantity. And when you're raising your kids, try not to dish up their plate because what happens is what we want them to finish what's on their plate. Right. And, and we give them so much that it's maybe they know how hungry they are. For me, my mom always dished up my plate and it was always a massive amount. And we always had to finish it. And that was a mindset that I had to break because I didn't, I wasn't that hungry. And so I would say, if you're going to dish up your children's plate, give them a very small amount. They can always have more if they're still hungry. Right. And so give them that very small amount. And that way you can still say like, I want you to eat what's on your plate, but I only gave you a little teeny bit of everything and you can go get more. And so they have the opportunity to be satisfied with that instead of creating that habit that there's this massive load on their plate and they need to finish it. And so I think that it's super easy. Like for my grandkids, I'm like, if they don't want to finish it, unfortunately, I did not do this with my kids. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I remember my mom saying, well, then you'll have it for breakfast. <laughs> and it yes. was all, I mean, that's nothing wrong with that. I realized my mom was struggling to put food on the table, quality food. And so she wanted us to finish what was there, but it created bad eating habits for me. So I ate whatever came out on my plate. And it, like now, even when I go to a restaurant, because I usually eat just plant-based, but when I go to a restaurant, I ask for sides. It is so much easier for me to add for, ask for sides and have this massive plate come and no, I cannot finish it because it's still hard for me to walk away from an unfinished plate. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I totally understand that. Um, if I, I always, whenever I go out to eat, I, I only eat half my meal and I bring the other half home because, you know, it, that's the other thing when you talk, when you ask me about what you teach up, what you teach, how you go about nutrition counseling is also the flavors um, and really taking your time. And everybody knows you're supposed to take your time and really savor the flavor. Well, I had one client that um, she actually, her thing was ho-hos and she doesn't mind if I tell this story, you don't know her anyway, but, um, but I just, this story always really got me because she ended up losing over a hundred pounds, but she, she was, she would share with me what she was eating. And it seemed right in a line of what she should in order to eat healthy and, you know, start to let those LBs come off. You know, she'd have salmon and steamed vegetables and then like, nothing's working, nothing's budging. I'm like, okay, let's, let's delve into this a little bit more. And she goes, okay. She goes, well, you know, I come home from work and I'm stressed and I didn't eat lunch. I skipped lunch and I just, um, I eat ho-ho's. And I go, okay. And she said, you know, she was, she goes, I didn't want to share that with you. And I go, okay. I go, well, 
I go, well, how many do you eat? She goes, well, I just take them out of the box and I just, you know, I'll have the two rolls. And um, I said, okay. I said, well, I said, why don't you do this? Tomorrow when you come home and you're stressed, you take the ho-hos out, you take one of them out, you cut it into six pieces and you sit down with a glass of water and you take a sip of water and you take one little section of that ho-ho and you take time and really savor the flavor. And then, you know, go ahead, take a sip of water and take that second piece. And so the next day she, she came back and she goes, she goes, oh my gosh. She goes, I realized I didn't even like ho-hos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah. yeah, she said she got to the third piece and she actually spit it out. And she said it was just so like, She's like, I, I just thought to myself, I can't believe I had two of these rolls and all I had was two pieces and I never want to have it again. And I thought, oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> that is so true. Like, don't, don't restrict yourself from things, but take the time to eat it. There's a big chemical release that goes on when we're chewing our food, like our body's preparing for it. It's all meant to happen for a reason. And so when you take that time, instead of having to like quickly shove it in your mouth, it, you do know like, oh, this is not for me. I love that she came to that realization. And, and the other thing that I want to leave with is to me, one of the most important things that you said, if you have a lot of weight to lose, or you have a big journey ahead of you in your health and wellness, take one little step at a time. Uh, we have degrees right from college and we didn't show up and think we were going to get it overnight. They had a plan for us and it was one class one class, right? One class. And the next thing you know, you're graduating and you've got your degrees. And so with weight loss or whatever you are on your journey, that five pounds, I could do five pounds, but you need to lose a hundred, but I only, it's gotta be five at a time, right? I'll get there. And you just take on that one. Not only is it more sustainable, but you are creating a beautiful pattern for yourself to that will completely sustain you throughout the rest of your life. You won't be doing the yo-yo, yo-yo thing. So I love that you gave those two tips. So if you guys are listening to nothing, learn to enjoy your food and take those, don't restrict it. Just sit down and be really aware of what you're eating, how you're eating it, what it tastes like. Do I even like this? And to be sure that you're like making those little teeny steps to wherever it is you want to go. It's just the road. You did not gain it all in one day. I promise you, you didn't wake up and you couldn't get your pants on, but definitely you can lose it the same way. Just one step at a time, five pound blocks. That's what I did when I had to lose weight. I'm like, I can lose five pounds. Like that's super easy. I can lose another five pounds. Right. And I five pound myself into being healthy and creating that beautiful habit. So that's a great tip. Um, can you tell us Donna, where everyone can go again and find you on social media in case they missed it when I said it earlier, and it will all be in the show notes. You guys can just click the link, go to her books, go and visit her on Instagram, get her tips. And there's like recipes on there that like this granola one that I see on her website. Oh my gosh. It looks delicious. I'll have to send you some. I'll be happy to send you some Jenna. I, I'm totally, yeah, I'm a granola <laughs> monkey, <laughs> but it's hard. By the way, it's hard to find because if you go in the store and read those packages, they're yes. packed with sugar. And I'm like, oh, so making your own is probably the best way to create that healthy snack that you can have or sprinkle on something, right? I sprinkle yes. granola on everything. Chia, like chia pudding and, with coconut milk and sprinkled mm -hmm. granola. It's so good. Yes, it's delicious. So where it's can they find you on Instagram? Yes. Instagram, Donna underscore Fadigato, um, Facebook, Donna Fadigato or Donna, the wellness builder. Um, I'm just done. I'm not really on Twitter, but, and also LinkedIn, Donna Fadigato. I love it. You guys are going to want to connect with her. She's pretty amazing. Grab her books and share them with your kids. Thank you so much for being here, Donna. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the, Oh, my health. There is hope podcast. Make sure to visit Jana's website, bestholisticlife.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, or listen there so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about the show, that'll help too. Let's change the world together, one health expert at a time. Looking forward to seeing you next time.